Good morning and welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Rapid City, South Dakota. Good morning to you who are here in person and good morning to you joining us via Facebook live stream. Today is the day of Pentecost, the great day when the Holy Spirit descends upon the church and commissions us for God's work in the world. We have a number of guests this morning. You heard our first guests. Joshua, do you have a name for the band yet? The Sharp Four. We have guest musicians, the Sharp Four, all the way from Black Hill State University in Spearfish, South Dakota. We also have the summer staff from Thunderhead Camp, who will be commissioned this morning for service. Our first campers arrive this afternoon, so you all get to speak on behalf of the diocese and commission them for this great work that they are about to do. And then we will have a potluck afterwards. So... It is a great day to be here at St. Andrews. Our worship this morning is the Holy Eucharist, Rite 2, which begins on page 355 of your prayer books. We don't have normal bulletins today. We're between seasons, so we'll, uh, we'll go uh, old school, back to the prayer book, as God intended. In fact, uh, well, okay, I'm going to give you this little sermon now so you don't get it during the real sermon. In 1549, on Pentecost Sunday, it was the first day that the Book of Common Prayer was required for all churches in England, and now, all these years later, the Book of Common Prayer has been translated into upwards of 200 languages. It was the first time, 1549, Pentecost, when people could pray in the language that they understood. So we will celebrate that by using our books of common prayer in language that you can understand right in front of you, in your hands, the word of God in your hands. Enough of a sermon. And it's on YouTube, live on YouTube. Look at that. Hallelujah. I invite you to take a moment to center yourselves and prepare to worship the Lord your God and then stand and join in singing hymn num number 512. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Our Gloria is number S280 at the front of the hymnal.
that how they do it in New Jersey? <laughs> the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us the same Spirit to have right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in God's holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now sit and listen with the ear of our hearts to the word of God. A reading from the Acts of Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language. Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Together, we will say Psalm 104. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. 
all of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. A reading from Romans. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip? And you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you.
Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle within us the fire of your love. Amen. As most of you know, I grew up in a small Baptist church in a small town on the edge of nowhere in western Minnesota. The church built, now when I say Baptist, I don't mean exciting Baptists. In Minnesota, these were uh, Swedish Baptists, and I could tell you that whole history, but I will not, I promise. Uh, But they they weren't the snake handling Baptists, they weren't the praise hands Baptists, they were the boring, quiet, fruit salad Baptists. Like the fruit salad that I brought today, yes, Deacon Marty. Take the boy out of the Baptist church, but you can't take the fruit salad out of the boy. The the church building, it's we we should go on the road. The the church building, Calvary Baptist Church, the church building itself was very plain. Beige siding on the outside, sensible, very sensible shingles on the roof, white walls. Felt banners made by the ladies group in the 1980s hanging on the walls, but they didn't say anything exciting, verses of scripture, as is meet and right. There were artificial shrubs in the corners, never live plants, a plain wooden cross, a plain wooden pulpit, and a plain wooden communion table that would be brought out dutifully once per month. Wine-colored chairs in rows facing the stage. And being the Baptists that we were, the wine-colored chairs were the closest thing to real stuff that we ever got. (laughs) Welch's grape juice and focaccia bread for communion. Although I had seen other churches, our Savior's Lutheran in town had a big image of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane behind their altar, and St. Joe's had a very lovely statue of the Holy Family as you were walking into the church. Although I had, had been to other churches and had seen other churches, these were all prairie churches built by mostly poor farmers whose parents had come from Sweden and Norway and Germany in search of something else, something better. The churches I had access to as a young person were lovely to be sure, but they were plain and simple, sometimes even stark. I was 18 when I went to New York City for the first time with my high school choir, We were scheduled to sing a concert at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine, which some of you know is the Cathedral of the Episcopal Diocese of New York. And it's the biggest cathedral of any denomination in this country. And if you ask the people at St. John the Divine, they'll tell you that it's the largest in the world. But I don't think that's true. If you're watching, don't come at us. When little 18-year-old me crossed the threshold between the cathedral entryway and the nave of the church itself, I remember having my breath taken away from me. It was almost as if some invisible force, some invisible person, had sucker-punched me right in the middle of the entryway and left me to sort myself out. I was taken first by the unbelievably high ceilings that just seemed to go high and higher and higher. I was taken by the stained glass and especially the humongous windows over the high altar and the back entrance of the church, the rose window. I was taken by the immovable marble altar smack dab in the center of the sanctuary up front. A little Baptist from the plains and prairies of Minnesota had never seen anything so elaborate 
so majestic, so otherworldly. All of the scriptural language about God's temple suddenly made sense to me. It was hard for me to imagine God, the God of the universe, the God who created and fashioned every beautiful thing that ever was and ever would be. It was hard for me to imagine God living in a little beige building across from the water tower in Montevideo, Minnesota, population 5,000 on a good day. But there at St. John the Divine, at this grand cathedral in this grand city, I could absolutely imagine God living in this place. I could absolutely imagine God's spirit taking up residence on that big honking marble altar and reigning forever and ever and ever. Amen. Imagine, then, my surprise when I actually paid attention to the words of Scripture, actually listened to the text and internalized it, and discovered that our God is a loose God. Our God does not seem to prefer grand cathedrals with huge altars and stunning works of art. God doesn't prefer that over little prairie churches. And in fact, our God does not seem to care much about buildings at all. Our God doesn't seem to care about boxes at all. Our God does not seem to need four walls and a roof in order to hang up God's hat at night. The great festival of Pentecost, this high holy day in our church's calendar, is a subversive day indeed. We heard in the Acts of the Apostles that God sent God's Spirit not to the temple, not to the priests or those in power, not to the governor, not to the emperor, but to the common people, to the disciples, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and those who had gathered from all over the world to celebrate the Jewish festival of weeks, Shavuot. What God did on that day, and indeed what God does every day, is earth-shaking. God does not care about buildings. God does not care about emperors. God cares about you. God cares about your heart. So committed is God to God's people, to us, to God's church, that God sends the Holy Spirit, the advocate, our friend, to live among us and in fact within us. Through the indwelling of God's spirit, we are you and I, each of us, in our brokenness, in our flaws, in our foibles. Through the indwelling of God's spirit, we are temples of God. We are made into cathedrals of the most high God. Those in whom the spirit comes to live are God's new temple, writes N.T. Wright, Anglican bishop and theologian. Those in whom the Spirit comes to live are God's new temple. They are, individually and corporately, places where heaven and earth meet. You and I are, individually and as a whole, we are temples of the Most High God, grander and more precious to God than any cathedral ever possibly could be. We are temples where the stuff of earth meets the stuff of heaven, where humanity and divinity embrace. We hear throughout scripture, and especially in these last few weeks of the Easter season, we hear that God's aim, God's vision, God's dream is unity among all people. This is why the first thing God's Holy Spirit did when she descended in power and majesty was make it so that folk could understand one another. Parthians and Medes, Cyrenians and Romans, Libyans, Egyptians, everybody understanding one another, unified in their worship of God. But note that the Acts of the Apostles doesn't say that they were all of a sudden speaking the same language. No, 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 no. The folk from Egypt were still speaking Egyptian. And the folk from Rome were still speaking Latin. But Egyptian speakers and Latin speakers could understand one another. 
The Holy Spirit came and descended and filled in the gaps and made it so that despite and perhaps because of their differences, they could understand one another. They could be unified in the work that God had given them to do. This is true for us as well. This is true for those of us who are cathedrals of the Holy Spirit. The unity of the people of God does not look like a melting pot where everybody just sort of mixes and mingles into one jumble of nondescript, non-distinct humanity. That might be the country, but that's not the church. God's vision, God's vision for us, for we who have been baptized, for we who are nourished at this table, God's vision for us is unity in our diversity. We are, as individuals and members of the Church of God, better and stronger and more reflective of God's self when we are able to stand in our unique identities, our genders, our sexualities, our races, our preferences, our commitments, our denominations, our cultures, and so on. When we are able to stand in those identities and engage with those who, though fundamentally one with us, are somehow still different from us, who don't look like us or pray like us, who don't think like us, who don't vote like us. This work of unity and diversity is the work that we have all been given to do, and we do it wherever we are and whenever we are. We do it in our homes and in our families. We do it here in Rapid City. We do it at camp. We do it on vacation. We do it in work. We do it with people we love and cherish. And we do it with people that we can't stand, can't tolerate, even people we don't like. God's Holy Spirit has descended upon each of us, upon you and you and you and me. God's Holy Spirit has taken up residence with us. God lives and dwells in our hearts today, not just on the day of Pentecost, but every day. God has crafted us from the clay of the earth to become a grand cathedral of God's Holy Spirit. We are, you and I, temples of God's unity, the places where the worship of Almighty God in word and in sacrament does not lead to friction but to greater and greater wholeness, restoration, and reconciliation. By the grace of God, by God's Holy Spirit living within us, may it be so. Amen. invite you to please stand as you're able and join on page 292 as we reaffirm our baptismal vows. Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. My dear friends, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only only Son.
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Joshua, can we get a little music during the sprinkling rite? Kiara. of music, just a little something. You may please be seated. Pardon me. As I mentioned, we will be commissioning, not you, you stay. We will be commissioning our summer camp staff. This is Deacon Micah. Micah is the assistant program director at Thunderhead this summer and will be here on Sundays throughout the summer here at St. Andrews. He's preaching next week. Uh, He has been sent from New Jersey the Diocese of New Jersey, uh, to learn a little bit about religion and how to be a deacon here, <laughs> here in South Dakota where we, where we know God. Uh, well, I just started reading the Bible that the bishop yeah, gave me. He just started reading the Bible. The, yeah, he was ordained to the diaconate on May 7th, so not even, not even a whole month as a deacon. So Deacon Marty is going to... Yeah. <laughs> deacon Marty is going to teach him everything she knows. Uh, he'll be here through the end of July. No, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Camp folks. Yeah, that's you in the t-shirts. Those to be commissioned for ministry at Thunderhead Episcopal Center will now be presented. Would you like to introduce them, I Micah? Would like to introduce. Here's a little microphone. Yes, like. I present to you Gabe and Sam. Where's Gabe from? Should we say where they're from? Uh, well, should we? Because yeah, none of them are from South Dakota, so we're going to teach them all about religion. Gabe, Gabe is from Connecticut. Sam is from Virginia. Elijah is from Colorado by way of Missouri. 
Jared is from Colorado by way of Missouri, and Artemis is from Wyoming by way of Utah. <laughs> there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, varieties of service, but the same Lord. God has appointed in the church various forms of ministry. My friends, you have been called to serve God and the people of this diocese as members of the staff community at Thunderhead Episcopal Center. You have been called to love and care for the young people of this diocese, helping them grow in their relationships with God, with self, and with others through worship, life in community, instruction, rest, and fun. I ask you, therefore... Do you commit yourselves to discerning and obeying God's call in your common life as members of the Thunderhead staff? If so, please say, we do. We do. Do you commit yourselves to serving God and the young people of this diocese? We do. Do you commit yourselves to preserving the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace in all that you say and do this summer? We do. You all thought you were getting off easy. People of God gathered here at St. Andrews, on behalf of the people of this diocese, do you commit to praying for these people and supporting them in their ministry? We do. I didn't hear you. We do. I heard you now. Thank you. <laughs> Michael, would you present? We have uh, pins and crosses as symbols of this work that you have committed yourself to this summer. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you in this and in all things, that you may do God's will in the service of the kingdom of his Christ. Amen. Amen. In the name of God and of the bishop, I commend you to this work and pledge to you the prayers, encouragement, and support of the Diocese of South Dakota. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon these persons who have now reaffirmed their commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name. Give them courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in our Christian vocation of witness to the world and of service to others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us exchange a sign of that peace.
Good morning again, everybody. As I mentioned, we have a potluck after Mass today. Please stay. There is plenty of food. If you didn't bring anything, that is a-okay. There is plenty of food. All are welcome, and I hope you all will stay as well. You perhaps noticed when you walked in the church that it was a little more chaotic than normal, uh, particularly in the hallway, and you haven't been to the parish hall yet. Uh, we had a rummage sale here yesterday, as some of you know, our annual Maybe we'll make it every two years kind of rummage sale. Um, it was a smashing success. Guess how much we raised? $2. Two do more than $2, Deacon Marty. More than $20. More than $500. $700. More than $1,000. That's 1000 More than $1,200. $1,500. Isn't that exciting? We raised $1,500 thanks to the leadership of Debbie Renner and the assistance of so many of you that I'm going to try to name. Steve, Cindy and Sandy were there, Vaud was there, Joanne was there, Shelley was there, Deacon Marty was there, Jan was there, Sandy was there. there you're hiding. You're sitting with the kids young lady. Sandy was there. Kim. Kim was there. Mark, was, Mark brought donuts. Tim. Tim was there. So all of you, every, all of you, there is still a bunch of stuff in the hallway. Please take it if you'd like. There is a um, truck. Yeah, okay. Don't take the weight bench. And if it says sold, don't take it. But otherwise, yeah, don't take that. Uh, otherwise, um, a thrift store or somebody is coming to pick stuff up on Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, so if you'd like to take something, take it. If you want to support the rummage sale but weren't able to be here yesterday, you can still uh, contribute and we can make that $1,500 go up. Cash, you, not cash, not items. Yeah, don't bring your items. If you leave stuff again outside of my office and block me out, I'm going to take it personal. I didn't this first time, but the next time not going to fly. But if you'd like, so I've been around that New Jersey guy too much, I'm making threats. If you would like to contribute financially, you can leave a check in the offering and mark a rummage sale or slip uh, cash into the little uh, wall slot outside of Kara's office. Um, those are the announcements that I can think of. Well, that's where you all went. I wondered. Any other announcements? Any announcements that you all have? Yes, sir. Hey, Maddie! <laughs> Where are they getting married? Nice. Nice. Remind me Maddie's soon to be husband's name? Michael. Yeah. Yeah, so pray for Maddie and Michael. A week from Tuesday? A week from Tuesday. And congratulations to you, Father of the Bride. Have you got your speech ready? Yeah, I'm working on it. Oh, nice. Don't take any pointers from me. Would the altar guild please stand up and take your bows? Yeah, if you'd like to join the Reserve Altar Guild, please see uh, uh, Commander Garwood back there for marching orders. Any other announcements you have for one another? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Make good your vows to the Most High.
The Holy Eucharist continues on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. I invite you to please stand as you're able. We offer this Holy Eucharist to the glory of God and for peace and unity in the world and in our hearts. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting all peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and in giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood, and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. 
and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. The feast. Alleluia. Alleluia. Could you hold this up, please? Thank you. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Our first communion hymn will be the uh, hymn on the back side of your leaflet.
hymn number 508. In thanksgiving for these life-giving mysteries, let us pray on page 366. Almighty and ever-living God, we we thank thank you for for feeding us. My dear friends, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God and Mother of us all, be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn is number 516.
Please stay for the potluck. Alleluia, alleluia. Take rummage sale stuff home with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia.